Hey there, fellow Sojourners, and welcome back to another edition of Appropriate the Culture. On today's episode, we examine recent winners of a few major awards and analyze what that means for us as a culture and the appropriate Christian response. I'm Pastor Shane, and I'll be the host of the first annual ATC Awards as we appropriate some culture. So recently, there have been a couple of awards that have been handed out that I think signify something about the state of our culture. Olympic skier Eileen Gyu, who betrayed her country to ski for China, not only took home gold for the oppressive communist regime, but also claimed the coveted, coveted, ESPY award for Breakthrough Athlete of the Year. And the ESPY goes to... Eileen Gu! Oh my god, this is insane. <laughs> wow, just being within like 500 feet of Steph Curry is pretty unbelievable, but like winning an SB for doing flips with wooden planks on my feet and like sliding around on rails, I just, wow. Thank you guys so much, this is insane. Um, thank you ABC, thank you ESPN for having me. Um, thank you all of you guys for being here. I have always said I wanna be an ambassador for the sport of free skiing especially for young girls in the sport. So um, I also want to share this moment with all the incredible pioneering female athletes who've come before me, who've paved the way for people like me, many of which are in the room right now. You guys know who you are. Thank you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and um, also to the young girls who are going to come after me and who are going to be the change makers and who are going to push it one more step further closer to equality. So shout out to you guys. Is that American equality or Chinese equality? Now, none of this should be particularly surprising because ESPN is owned by ABC, which is owned by Disney, which is owned by China. And if you rearrange the letters in ESPY, you get spy E for Eileen. Coincidence? Yes. But I think it says something that while we used to hang traitors, we now give them awards. This is like giving Benedict Arnold the Presidential Medal of Freedom. And speaking of the Presidential Medal of Freedom, professional whiner and occasional soccer player Megan Rapinoe was just recently bestowed our nation's highest civilian award, this even despite the fact that civilian Megan Rapinoe actively despises our nation. On taxpayer-supported NPR, Terry Gross in the segment Fresh Air had this exchange with Megan Rapinoe, quote, so I want to read something that you reprint in your memoir, and this is what U.S. Soccer said in an official statement. And you say it might as well have been headed, Dear Megan. So the statement was, Representing your country is a privilege and honor for any player or coach that is associated with U.S. Soccer's national team. In front of national and often global audiences, the playing of our national anthem is an opportunity for our men's and women's national team players and coaches to reflect upon the liberties and freedom we all appreciate in the country. As part of the privilege to represent your country, we have an expectation that our players and coaches will stand and honor our flag while the national anthem is played. What was your action, your reaction, when you read that statement? I couldn't believe it. I think I was truly sort of dumbstruck. It really upset me. The nerve and the audacity to say what they did in that statement. It is an honor and a privilege that we all have in this country? I don't think so. I don't think we do all have that in this country. So it missed the entire point, clearly. And it was just cruel in a way. It was gaslighting, and it was manipulative, and it was cruel. But it also was very, I thought, very intentionally meant to silence me. So it's not an honor or privilege to be a part of the U.S. soccer national team. And our country is too racist, bigoted, misogynistic, and evil to stand for our national anthem. But if America's handing out awards, not going to turn that down. Frankly, I'm a better candidate for the Presidential Medal of Freedom because number one, since adulthood, I've never lost to a 14-year-old boy in sport, and number two, my hypocrisy has limits. When the Tulare Association of Satanists offered me an award, was I flattered? Sure. Did I accept? No. Because there are such things as principles. But apparently, no such principles exist for professional whiners. Here's more of that interview. 
what are some of the repercussions you face professionally? There's sort of gray repercussions, I'll say. Mmm, gray, hard to see clearly, not quite defined. Like most persecution, it's sort of a vibe. Just ask the Uyghurs or the Christians in China, right, you? But she continues, you know, in like, in terms of sponsorships, I didn't lose any sponsorships, which I think is great. Obviously, Nike's a big sponsor of mine. They have been very supportive. But I certainly didn't get any new sponsorships, and I certainly didn't get any new opportunities, sort of, in the short term. So, the repercussions were that you didn't lose sponsors. But you didn't get new ones in the short term, which means in the long term, you did. So, literally nothing happened to you. What do you want, a medal? I've suffered more repercussions for unpopular opinions. OG followers of ATC will realize that I lost sponsors, mostly because I got tired of the bit, but still. Now, maybe I'm being too harsh on Megan. After all, she is a self-proclaimed champion of women and women's sports. And by women, I mean men. Speaking in support of men and women's sports, she said, I would also encourage everyone out there who is afraid someone's going to have an unfair advantage over their kid to really take a step back and think, what are we actually talking about here? We're talking about people's lives. I'm sorry, your kid's high school volleyball team just isn't that important. It's not more important than any one kid's life. Now that is quite a statement, because I don't know, if I had dedicated my entire life to a sport, if I was the standard of female excellence in that sport, and I was thoroughly beaten by 14-year-old boys, not men, boys, I might be a little more sensitive to the whole competitive advantage thing. Because here's the thing, Megan, if the FC Dallas under-15 squad had all identified as female, you would have never made the U.S. soccer team, and everything that you have earned or accomplished would be taken from you. But I'm sure if it saves just one life, you would have gladly given it all up. So, Megan, I'm going to kill myself unless you give away all of your money. Are you really going to let me kill myself? Think of my children, Megan. And don't tell me that I don't have to kill myself just because I'm not getting what I want. That's ridiculous. And speaking of ridiculous, trans swimmer Leah Thomas has been nominated for an NCAA Woman of the Year Award. Which is all the more impressive because Leah Thomas is, in fact, not a woman. Now, you could say, who really cares? All of these awards are silly, and that is true. But there is an old adage, that which gets rewarded gets repeated. In that sense, the Olympic medals earned by Gyu and Rapinoe are less relevant to the culture than the ESPYs or the Medal of Freedom, because the former is rewarding athletic excellence, but the latter is rewarding ideology. And that which gets rewarded gets repeated. These awards are the promulgation of ideology, and that does matter. Now, all awards are psychological manipulation, which is why nearly every single field hands out awards, from Oscars to Emmy to Grammy to Nobel Prize to J.D. Power to Salesman of the Year to Employee of the Month. You can motivate employees, you can shape ideology, and you can curate culture simply by handing out awards. Because that which gets rewarded gets repeated. If certain subject matter wins Oscars, more films will tackle it. If certain findings get published in science journals, other studies will be sure to corroborate it. If one worldview is more likely to win a Peace Prize, you'll see that worldview adopted. If a kind of post gets likes and shares on social media, that dopamine reward will be followed with similar posts. You can be led and manipulated by awards. So how do we combat this? Well, we could offer our own awards, and Christians do dole out awards, the Dove Awards, the Movie God Awards, the aptly named Christian Book Award. And no, my books have never won. The Bible wins every year, which is not fair. It shouldn't even be eligible. But every year, there's a new publication of it. But joking aside, I'm not convinced that awards and subcultures are particularly effective. And if anything, might be harmful in that it doesn't influence the culture and it conditions Christians in the wrong way. Christians ought to be encouraged, psychologically encouraged even, not to seek the praises of man. Awards seem to do the opposite. John says in his gospel, Yet at the same time, many, even among the leaders, believed in him. But because of the Pharisees, they would not openly acknowledge their faith for fear they would be put out of the synagogue. For they loved human praise more than praise from God. And Jesus is constantly calling out the people who are doing their religious works in front of others in order to be praised. He says they got the reward in full, meaning a pitiful little thing. Instead of replicating our own versions of secular award shows, we should relentlessly mock them as pitiful things and harden ourselves against the desire to be praised by man. Riches I heed not, nor man's empty praise. Thine my inheritance, now and always. 
Now that doesn't mean we can't use the same tools to shape the culture, but rather than create subculture awards, we should be asking ourselves, why aren't Christians in a position to influence who gets nominated for ESPYs or Grammys or Emmys or Oscars or Nobel Prizes? If we want to influence those spheres, we should find ways to be in those spheres. Well, that's it for today. As a reminder, ATC is getting its own platform by the end of August. So if you watch this on Facebook, you're going to have to join my author's Facebook page if you want to see this content. You can subscribe now to Appropriate in the Culture channel on YouTube. I'm working on transferring all the videos there. But come September, that will be the only place to view ATC on YouTube. If you listen in podcast form, we will have a dedicated channel for that as well. And I will let you know when that drops. If you follow on Locals, everything will stay the same there. And finally, as I mentioned last week, we've been talking nonstop about the need and importance of influencing the culture, and we're taking a step at doing that by producing a feature film. If you or someone you know have experience in any area of filmmaking and you're intrigued by this, be sure to reach out to me, and we'll have details on that project as things progress. In the meantime, I'll see you here next week for more Appropriate in the Culture. Mm -hmm.